The first string sorting algorithm that we're going to look at is actually the basis for several more complicated algorithms. It's called key index counting, and it's very useful in a particular special situation. Uh, but let's take a, a quick review of where we left off with sorting. Uh, so uh, we uh, considered a number of sorting algorithms, starting with insertion sort, and then merge sort, quick sort, and heap sort. Uh, and we got to the point where uh, we could uh, find an algorithm that's heap sort that uh, guarantees to sort n, L n items in time proportional to n log n uh, without even using any extra space. Uh, unfortunately, uh, not stable. And all these algorithms uh, were uh, <coughs> useful or are useful for uh, any type of generic key as long as it implements the compare to operation. Uh, and not only that, we prove that any algorithm that just uses compares has to use number compares proportional to n log base 2n. So uh, in a very important sense, uh, merge sort uh, or heap sort, for example, uh, are optimal. Uh, you can't use asymptotically fewer compares uh, for uh, either one. And, and uh, uh, with heap sort, you can't use less uh, extra space. So why do we consider uh, other sorting algorithms? Uh, there's a lower bound. Uh, wh why are we uh, th thinking about this? The question is, can we do better? And obviously, uh, we're here because the answer is that we can do better uh, uh, if we don't depend on compares. The lower bound, the one assumption made by the lower bound is that we use compares. Uh, but we don't always need to use compares. And so uh, let's look at an example. Key index counting is a fine example of that. Uh, and it's representative of a fairly common situation in sorting application where it happens to be that the keys that we're using to sort are small integers. So in this, this case, this is supposed to mimic an application where uh, there's students and they're assigned to sections. There's not too many sections, uh, and we want to uh, get the thing sorted. Uh, so uh, we want to distribute the students by section uh, and so we want to sort according to the section number, and uh, that's a small integer. And the implication of knowing that the key is a small integer is that we can use the key as an array index then. Uh, and uh, by knowing that the key is an array index, we can arrange for a uh, fast sort. Uh, so lots of applications uh, for that. Uh, when you may, maybe you have phone numbers, you can sort by area code. Uh, and, or if you have a string you just want to sort by the first letter, you could do it that way. And actually, that idea leads to uh, an efficient sorting algorithm, uh, actually two different ways. Um, now, uh, don't forget that uh, we're sorting according to a sort key. But uh, usually, we're sorting uh, bigger uh, generic items that have other information associated with them. Uh, if you were just sorting the small integers, you could just count how many ones there are, how many twos there are, and like that, and then uh, in one pass. And then if there's three ones, just output three ones, and so forth. Uh, but the uh, complication is that uh, we have to carry the associated information along. So we have to work a bit harder than that. Uh, so uh, here's the code for this method called key index counting, uh, and let's look at a demo. So here's the key index counting demo. Uh, now to make this a little less confusing and not so many numbers, uh, we're going to use lowercase a for 0, b for 1, c for 2, and like that. So uh, it's the uh, a minus first letter of the alphabet, uh, whatever, however you want to think of it. Uh, so, and we're only going to look at uh, 6. So we're supposing that we're sorting this array uh, that has uh, six different small integers, and we're using lowercase letters to represent the uh, integers so that we can easily distinguish between uh, the keys and the indices. So now let's look at uh, the processing for this. So the first thing that we do is we go through and we count the frequency of occurrence of each letter. Uh, and so the way that we do that is we keep an array uh, 
Now, uh, their array has actually got to be one bigger than the number of different uh, key keys that we have and the number of different uh, small integers that we have. So in this case, array of size seven. Uh, and just to uh, make the code a little cleaner, we keep the number of A's in count of one, the number of B's in count of two, and so forth. Uh, and so uh, if we're th once we've set up that's what we want to do, then it's trivial to go ahead and count the frequencies. Uh, we simply go through, for I from zero to N, we go through our input, uh, and <coughs> when we, uh, A of I, when we access uh, a value in our input, it's a small integer, so it's uh, zero, one, two, three, four, uh, or five, and uh, we simply uh, add one to that integer and use it to index into the array. So when we see an A that's zero, then we're inc incrementing count of one. And we see a B that's uh, one, we're incrementing count of two, and so forth. Uh, so in this case, we increment uh, count uh, corresponding to D and then A and C and like that. So every time we encounter a new key, we just simply increment one of these counters. In one pass through, uh, we get an array that gives us the number of uh, A's, B's, C's, D's, E's, and F's. That's the first pass uh, of key index counting. Count the frequencies of each letter using the key as an index. Uh, now the next step is, uh, is <coughs> called computing cumulates. Uh, and that's uh, a really easy thing as well. Uh, all we do is we uh, go through the count array and uh, simply uh, at each uh, step uh, we add the current one to the sum computed so far. So if we look uh, before, uh, we had two A's and uh, three B's. Uh, so that means there's five letters less than C. Uh, that's the A's and the B's. And there's six letters less than D and eight letters less than E and so forth. Uh, and that's just obtained by uh, we start with uh, two, add three to it to get five, add one to it to get six, uh, and uh, with that one pass through the count array, uh, then we can find out, for example, there's six keys less than D and eight keys less than E, and those cumulates tell us where the Ds go in the output. There's six keys less than D and eight keys less than E, so the Ds have to go in A6 and A7. So this is an array of indices that is going to tell us how to distribute the keys in the output. So that's the next step, is access the cumulates using the key as an index to move items. So uh, let's take a look at, so now, uh, remember when we see an A, we're just going to count that as zero, so we're going to go to count zero, uh, and uh, that'll access this entry in the count array. So we go through the whole uh, array to be sorted, uh, and we move each key exactly to where it has to go, and we'll do that one at a time now. So uh, when I is zero, we're looking at the D. Uh, the count array corresponding to D has six, so it says just put D in there and increment that. It means it's got another D, it's gonna go into seven. Uh, and these things, the way we pre-computed them, are not gonna run into one another. So now A, we go, uh, that goes in zero, and we increment the count array corresponding to A. Uh, next thing is C, uh, and so that's gonna, it says to put it in five, uh, and then increment uh, the <coughs> count array corresponding to C. And F, it says put it in nine. Uh, uh, next is B, we put in two. Uh, sorry, another F, we put in 10. Uh, next is B that we put in two. So you can see the keys from the input are getting distributed in the output uh, according to uh, the counts and the cumulus that we pre-computed. Uh, so now we get the other D, uh, which goes into seven. Uh, we get the, uh, another B, which goes into three, and then increment to four to move for where the next one goes. Uh, F goes into 11. Uh, the last B goes into four. Uh, the E goes into eight, and the second A goes into one. So that's uh, move the items, uh, again, simply by using the key as index into the count array. Uh, and then uh, the last step is to just uh, copy uh, the sorted array back into the original input. 
Uh, that's a demo of key index counting. Quick summary of key index counting. Uh, we make one pass through the array to count frequencies of each letter using the key as an index. Then we go through that uh, count array to uh, compute cumulus just by uh, adding each new one into the running sum. Uh, then we use those cumulus uh, and uh, access that using key as index to actually move items over and get them in sorted order uh, and then move back into the original array. Uh, what's the running time of this algorithm? Well, uh, the analysis is actually uh, quite simple because uh, it's just uh, a couple of loops uh, through the array to be sorted and through the count array. Uh, and uh, the key, f key fact to note that it takes uh, time proportional to n plus r and space proportional to n plus r. Now r, remember, is our radix. That's the number of different character values. Uh, so, so, so for ASCII, maybe that's uh, 256, uh, and um, <coughs> for genomic data, maybe it's four. Uh, and N, uh, we're assuming we're sorting huge files. So uh, really, this is linear time in uh, many, many practical uh, situations. Uh, there's also the question of, is it stable? Yeah, it's actually stable, um, because uh, when we do the move, we move things with equal keys in the order that we see them. We keep them in the order that we see them. That's just the way the method works. So we have a, uh, for this uh, special situation, we have a linear time stable sorting method uh, which beats the uh, n log n bound and is useful in many practical situations.